Okay. So, when I first read 1984, written in 1894, in Chapter 1, and of course I read this many years ago, so I may not per perfectly remember exactly what it was, person finds a journal, decides to bring it home, and decides to write about all of his anti-government views in this journal, despite there being cameras all over the place and maybe, maybe not in his house. So it's like, okay, why write them down if the government is going to, you know, come find you, maybe kill you because of these thoughts? Okay, whatever, you want to vent? I guess I can understand it, but it's still really stupid to do. And then, because of, like, the ink used back then, he has to leave it in his, like, kitchen, opened up to the passage he just wrote, because if he closes it, the ink will smear, which is not a problem anymore. <laughs> I don't think it was a problem in the 1980s, either. <laughs> but, sure, in the 1890s, I guess that was a thing that happened. Sure. And then someone comes to his door, and talks about whatever, and through the entire conversation, this main character guy is like, Oh my gosh, I hope they don't look past my shoulder into the kitchen, read the open book I left in the kitchen, stating about how I hate the government. That would be really bad! It's like... <laughs> like, you're setting yourself up for failure here, dude. And that was as far as I could read into it. <laughs> you I can't just not... entirely fault you on that, because... Here's the thing. You know Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? I've heard of it. I remember, like, growing up, I tried reading it, like, a bunch of times. And, like, it, it always ended up the same. Like, the first chapter is just like, okay, you know what? I like this. Because it's actually telling a story. The second and third chapters are basically entirely, like, exposition and no story. And I just could not get into it. And I eventually just had to force myself on a particular, you know, attempt at reading it to just actually sit down, read past that point, and continue. Mm -hmm. And then I basically didn't stop reading until I would read through the entire uh, five book series. I remember when I was young, there was... There were a lot of books that I didn't particularly want to read. There's one book titled The Unmagician. Do either of you want to take a wild guess as to what that book's about? Postal delivery. Uh, almost, actually. Uh, in a world where absolutely everybody in the world has magic, one teenage boy gets bullied frequently because he's the only person who doesn't have magic. Uh, but then he comes to a spiritual awakening at some point during the story to find it's not that he doesn't have magic, but his power is anti-magic. He gets rid of magical things around him. Which, frankly, could be an interesting premise for like an isekai show. I mean, it kind of sounds like the initial premise for uh, My Hero Academia. So I haven't actually watched that one. You think I should watch it? Eh, it, it's okay. I think at this point it's overstated its welcome. Uh, all of, the only parts that I really remember of that, that book are that beginning part. Uh, the kid being in a lying castle and being worried, oh my gosh, what if my anti-magic causes all the levitation spells to fail? Which, I mean, wouldn't it? <laughs> and the kid using his anti-magic ability to uh, sneak into a place because all of the wards and all of the security is magical, so they don't detect him. And don't have any special notice for when the security goes offline. 
So he's able to just basically walk into a place and steal some whatever thing. But there was one book that I had to be in high school, because I had to be in either 1984, which I didn't particularly want to, or there's this other book, and I don't remember the name of it, but it sucked. That book was so bad. It was so bad that a character who I thought was like a five-year-old little brother was actually the main character's dad. Set in... I keep hitting the window sprite instead of hitting pause on this. Set in, I don't know, the 70s, 60s, 50s, 40s, you know, the past. Set in sometime in the past. Uh, main character grows up on a lax farm where they grow lax. You know, for like lax bread or lax seed oil or whatever. Lax. Exciting. Flax. Yeah, they don't even show you the car cracks. Um, something, something, something happened. I did read this entire book cover to cover. Something, something, something happens. She wants to run away. Father is super ultra mega Catholic, whatever. For some reason, there's disagreement because she wants to, you know, be a person. And he's like, no, you're not allowed to be a person. You're my daughter. Blah, blah, blah. Eventually, she throws an axe at her dad to try- Uh, that is the only point of excitement in the story. <laughs> she throws an axe at him, it misses, gets wedged into, like, the frame of the barn door or something. And the dad's like, ha, huh, now I can use this as proof that you've been, like, aggressive at, at me and I'm actually defending myself from you. Uh, because- Obviously, there's no possible way that he could have just put the axe in the door himself. No, obviously, because there's an axe in the barn door frame, it had to have been thrown at him by his daughter. That is the only explanation for why there's an axe there. And you could just think, oh, well, maybe the sorts of people in the environment would just believe him no matter what he said. No, because it is specifically brought up much later in the story that when that part of the barn, like, broke away and the axe fell, then he no longer had any uh, evidence or proof and could no longer, you know, keep up his side of the story. <laughs> it's another was like, why is that a thing? Why do you need to, like, be able to show people an axe in the barn frame? And also, why didn't you show anybody the axe in the barn frame if that was supposed to be your proof? Like... Oh, and I think the dad dies in a fire or something? I don't know? Maybe? The Flax's field catches on fire while he's mid-harvest. He goes, But I wanna save my Flax! And, like, jumps over a river to run into the burning Flax fire, and I think he dies? I don't... I don't know? Oh, and the girl runs away with her boyfriend, and that's supposed to be a happily ever after. It wasn't even like she was gay or something. It's like she just wanted to be with someone who wasn't the person that her dad wanted her to be with. <laughs> you can tell how much I thought of this story uh, from how little I remember of it. <laughs> yeah. I think this book was bigger than 1984, physically speaking. My, my 1984 could beat up your 1984? <laughs> Maybe this book was actually set in 1894. Would not surprise me. Of course, wait, when it comes to books about main characters uh, living and working on a farm, I much prefer the one where they're trying to run away from the person who killed their parents, but also trying to get the guy who killed their parents to admit that he killed their parents because currently the children are 
to blame for killing their parents or something. It's been a while since I read it. Uh, and in that one, the guy who killed the parents actually winds up dying. Uh, because the farmer winds up accidentally shooting him with a nail gun and killing him. So they can no longer get the confession and the police finally arrest these kids for being, you know, on the run for it however long and now, but it turns out that the farmer's rival, who had been mentioned throughout the story, set up recording devices at the farm, got the confession of the killer on tape, <laughs> uh, but then the rival farmer also had to get like a, was penalized because like, hey, that's illegal. Hey, thanks for, you know, proving these kids innocent. Also, that's illegal. <laughs> Yeah, this sounds it's like a terrible story. It was also like book five or something of a series. Wait, These you are... started book five of a series? No, but that was the only one where they were working on a farm. The others, they weren't working on a farm. I wish I remember what the book was, because I really liked it. I would read every book, like, as it came out. Multiple times, even, because it was just that good. I see. Also had a line that, at the time, I thought was really memorable. Uh, character milking a cow, and then the cow tries to kick them. And then... So they ducked. Uh, the leg missed me, and so did the bullet. Wait, what? Yep, the murderer had, like, walked in behind them and apparently had shot them, like, as they were ducking from the cow's leg. I swear up you two's day has been. Have you two been good? I went to work. Fun, fun. I got to play card games at my LGS. And it got robbed while we were while I was there. Wait, what? Yeah, the store got robbed. Like armed robbery or like no. The low-key kind of robbery. So, while I'm there, playing cards and stuff, and there is, you know, maybe ten other people in this place. There's about a dozen people in the store. And it's like a one-room store, basically. A uh, woman walks in, walks right up to the counter, leans over the counter to be, like, you know, face-to-face -face with the employee there. It's like, so, what kind of store do you have here? The employee who's heard this question countless times like oh yeah we sell you know comic books collectibles figurines 
trading cards. You know, that sort of thing. And this woman is all like, okay, cool, cool. And goes off to like wander about the store, look around. It's like, so far that's pretty usual for new people coming into this place. So the boy kind of just like watches her as she walks around because, you know, keep an eye on the customers and all that. Woman picks up like a hundred dollar Deadpool figurine. And the employee is just standing there mentally going, it's like, yes, I'm finally going to be able to sell that thing. Just been sitting there so long. Woman picks up some other stuff, whatever, and then just walks out the door. Wow. And I know this story so well, because the employee recounted it to us, like, five times. And at some point... The employee like went next door to talk to the person there. The same woman had robbed them like a few days ago. But also the employee, uh, the next door employee, had like the picture of like the woman's face, had her ID, had like her, her Facebook account, like, like they knew who this woman was. <laughs> huh. And. By the time we were leaving from our card games, a police officer was there to take statements and stuff. So anyway, the card games went well. We played some party box. That was fun. Nice. Yeah, just, you know, play along with all of our weird cards and stuff, and then Chase just kind of goes, Uh, how does this work? And he just shows me, like, a booster tutor. Like, oh, well, you see. <laughs> so I gotta pull out my collection of booster packs and... Upon seeing the collection of various magic boosters, my brother's friend was all like, Ooh, go for the Marn Horizons one! <laughs> uh, and that's a pack that Cinnamon had said was really, really lucky. Cause, like, that Cinnamon I held up... had said it was lucky? Pardon? You said Cinnamon said it was lucky? Yeah. Uh, while I was packing away the booster packs, I held out... I held them out to uh, Cinnamon. <laughs> And normally he would, like, you know, headbutt one of them, or whatever. It's like, okay, you know, the cinnamon blessing and all that. That one, he didn't just headbutt it, he, like, he just rubbed his head all around that pack. Like, he really wanted that particular booster pack. Uh. Like, that one really got the cinnamon blessing of approval and all that. So that was the one that cinnamon said was lucky. <laughs> While we were playing uh, Party Box, one of the regulars from the store like just walks by. It's like, that's not magic. <laughs> it's like, what? It's a dying kettle, the Cure Master. Have you never heard of it? Pretty sure it's part of the Yugi deck. But it's nice, like, playing cards with people and, like, I basically have a story for every single card that we're using. Basically all of them, at least. And some of the stories are definitely uh, worse than others, but still. <sighs> it's still nice. Just being able to be there, it's like, oh yeah. That was when I started playing Yu-Gi-Oh! It's like, that was part of, like, one of my favorite Commander decks. Like, 
Oh, yeah, of course, that's a Mox Lotus. How could I not have Mox Lotus in the deck? Like, seriously. Also, my uh, hot new backpack kind of broke. Uh, How'd you yeah. break your backpack? Why or how? Why? How? Because it wasn't made properly. How? Uh, one of the shoulder straps, where it connects to like the thinner strap, because it wasn't like sewn in quite properly, it kind of like just slipped apart. <laughs> I go to take it off, it just like snap, and I'm like, oh, whoops. <laughs> but that got patched up, so that's good. So hopefully, it's all good now. You can hope. Can't you do better than hope? Uh, I mean, I can test it and find out if it breaks again. That's gonna hope be pretty bad. Them. I mean, hope makes the world go round. Yeah, what are you gonna do, Ellie? Fall into despair? Wow, that's quite the reference, Claire. I wouldn't really say it's quite a reference. It is a reference, but it's like, we play Donkey Kong for like every week. And by every week, you mean we did on a regular basis, and then we stopped for a few months. And then we started playing it again. Like every Tuesday we play it because I upload it on Wednesdays. I guess that would do it. So yeah, we're back to playing Danganronpa every week. Also, I'm surprised that the finale of Danganronpa 2 got so many views. I don't know what it is. Apparently, final is one of their keywords or something in the algorithm. I mean, that makes sense. I just want to get another level up. I want to, I want to have more attack. So, uh, did you end up getting that watering can? No, I didn't get the children's watering can. So much for your watering can only, man. <laughs> I edition. still need to make a commander deck that's somehow watering can only. I need to find some flippin' commander that's like a watering can. Any magic card that's a watering can and just make that Voltron. And just have the watering can only deck. Oh, speaking of cards, I got some of my new cards in the mail. So now, so now some of my really, really stupid uh, commander deck ideas might actually be able to come to fruition. Oh? Okay, so Magic the Gathering has as one of its mechanics, Companion. Companion is a special rule where the Companion starts off outside the game, in the sideboard. And you can have the companion be, like, essentially similar to a commander in a regular game of magic as long as your entire deck follows the rules of the companion. Notably, the companion itself does not have to follow the rules, but 9 out of 10 of them do. Essentially. Uh, so one of them is Bandon Commander, Lutri, 
because its requirement is that every card in your deck, other than basic lands, have to have a different name. Which is just the rule of Commander. Makes and sense. one of them is Soft Band as companion in Commander because uh, Yurion, your deck has to have at least 20 cards over the minimum deck size. Commander is exactly 100 cards, you cannot have an extra 20. Or so, so they really... want you to think. So those two are like, one is banned and one is basically banned as companion. Uh, let's see if I can remember the other eight. Uh, there's Omari, Omaru, whatever. Each non-land card in your deck has to share the same card type. So I have like, Omari Planeswalkers, where everything is just lands and planeswalkers. I have one for travel cards, I've been working on one for battles. You can do, you know, creature, artifact, enchantment. Can't legally do instant or sorcery, but you can try something like that, but you get the idea. I think I do. Um, one of them, every card in your deck, every permanent card in your deck has to be CMC 2 or less. One of them, every non-land card in your deck has to be CMC 3 or more. Uh, one of them, every every card in your deck has to have even CMC. One of them, every non-land has to have an odd CMC. One where you can only play a select certain amount of character type, or uh, creature types. All of your creatures have to be one of, like, four or five types. It's like cat, beast, elemental, and I think there's another. <laughs> How many more do I have to go? Uh, odd, even, lo uh, lower, higher, uh, cat, beast, elemental, Amari, uh, Lutri, Lutri, and Yurion, and then there's two more. I'm sure I can remember them. Oh, one of them is every single card in your deck has to have an activated ability. And one of them is uh, in your entire deck, no card can have two of the same mana symbol in its cost. So a card can't cost like red, red. They cost one in a red or two in a red. But it can't cost, like, red red. So, one of the stupid ideas was having an Omari Battles deck, but there's like 30 or so battles, not really enough for a proper deck, and battles really need creatures in order to fight the battles. <laughs> pretty stupid idea, pretty funny to think about actually doing. The other stupid idea is uh just run all 10 companions that's it <laughs> fun it only breaks like four rules of magic it feels like it breaks so much more well yeah rule number one you can only have one companion obviously have to break that rule to have more than one Rule number two, Lutri is banned. Just, you know, break that rule, unbound. Rule number three, deck size. You have to run a 120 card deck because of Yurian. And rule number four, and... Because, like, some of these cards seem counterproductive. How are you supposed to have, you know, everything less than two and everything three or greater? Do you know what my solution is? What? Uh, the, the entire deck is 120 lands. That's it. <laughs> that, that's the whole deck. 120 lands. I'm <laughs> 
<laughs> which, you, which involves breaking rule number four, having a land as your commander. As normally, that's uh, that's not allowed. And in the whole entire history of Magic the Gathering, there are two lands that actually have five color identity. Out of tens of thousands of cards, there are two. Uh -huh. One of them, in particular, seems very fitting for this. It's, uh, the World Tree. So, yeah, catch me, uh, rocking on up with my World Tree EVH deck, running 130 total cards. I have no doubt that the deck is going to be really bad. <laughs> but, I mean, so is the tribal deck, and that card is re and that deck is really fun to play. Because tribal is a card type, so I have a Omari tribal deck. And there's like 50 tribal cards, so half the deck is like lands. And the other half is like just bad cards. Overcosted, underperforming. It's a bad deck, but it's fun. Well, that is the important bit, isn't it? Oh, yeah, boy. <laughs> People tell me, you can't make that deck. I mean, but that's the same thing that they said about Progenitus Voltron, and I made that. That deck actually performs kind of well sometimes. Uh, Pagetis, for those maybe in the audience who don't know their magic lore, is a 10 mana 10 10 creature with protection from everything. Voltron is a, uh, I want to say an archetype? A type of building a commander deck where you just worry about putting lots of ores and equipment on your commander so you can swing in for a potentially 21 commander damage, which is lethal. Protection, meaning, uh, <laughs> creature with protection cannot be damaged, enchanted, equipped, blocked, or targeted by anything it has protection from. So you cannot put equipment or auras on progenitus. Period. But yeah, progenitus Voltron is actually really fun to play. Maybe I should play it later. Oh, did you all hear that, like, the time jumped ahead today? Yeah. You didn't? No, I heard about that, like, all day long. I just didn't know that it had happened until I, you know, read about it a whole bunch. Because I wasn't up till, like, 3 a.m. I was only up till about, probably, 2.30. Woke up at 8? 9, maybe? I think about nine-ish, almost nine. <laughs> Here I am with like maybe six hours of sleep. Everything is fine. This is my little brother. <laughs> Probably more sleep than I got. Wanting, zoning out and wanting to take naps in the middle of the day. Nap. Yeah. Meow meow, nap nap. Yeah, it's like derpy. Nap time! Meow! Frankie. 
Everything is probably fine. I'm sure everything is okay. Here we go. Oh boy. Cool. Oh yeah. Played a commander game today. Another player got a mayhem devil out. Whenever a, a player sacrifices a permanent, mayhem devil deals one damage to a target of your choice. So it is being annoying, not like killing our stuff with the mayhem devil. But I went, oh right, I can do that too. And I made two copies of the mayhem devil. And then like past the chase's turn, he's like, well, I guess I play this fetch land. And I guess I sacrifice it to go look for a land. And they're both like, oh, you sacrifice something, do you? He just looks up at us, both smiling evilly, and it's like, no, I don't. <laughs> yeah, that was... Eh, that was fun. My brother wound up winning at the end. I helped him out with it. By helped him out, I mean I showed him what his cards could do. So I mean, sure, I could have just, you know, taken the win and been all like, yay, I win. But I think it's more important that he gets to see uh, how he can win instead. More memorable that way, I figure. Okay. Oh, right. Bathhouse. Let's see. No, that's Wednesday. Bathhouse is open. What? I can't take a bath at the bathhouse until the water's all finally chopped. Chop the water? Yeah. to make it sure it's all nice and uh, finely chopped. Hey, silly cat, what you doing? By the way, Ellie, I continued that uh, thing you doing memes. I know, uh -huh. I saw. I was oh, letting okay. somebody else okay. take a look at it. So I had a dream last night that felt like it should have been in like a horror movie or something. Not entirely sure. <laughs> Don't know why I had that dream. It's kind of stupid. Uh, family goes to a cabin, whatever. Everything seems fine. Uh, till they're all like chilling in the basement. The cabin had a basement. And then it's like, no, no, there's no air here. Oh my gosh, we're suffocating. There's no air. It's like, well, why don't we go outside? Maybe there's air outside. It's like, don't be silly. There's not air outside. Obviously, everywhere in the world is just as bad as we're having it right now. And like the kid of the family is all like, eh, forget that. I'm going to try to go outside anyway and see if everything is fine. Like, opens the door, walks outside. It's like, oh my gosh, there's air here. I can breathe, kind of. Still not like completely fine, but at least it's uh, better than it was in the basement. And then like there's a knock on the front door. Family answers it. It's like, hey, you guys okay? There's a gas leak in your cabin. <laughs> well, that's bad. <laughs> yeah, but like the parents are all like, no, there's just no air. Obviously, going outside won't fix it. We should stay here and not, like, you know, go out of breath. We should try to basically use what little air remains. No, dude, it's just a gas leak. Literally, go outside. You'll be okay.
And then there was a story about something, something, uh, some kind of infection or whatever that spreads between, like, people and things, and it makes, like, the thing that is infected is, like, a star of attention, and, like, everyone wants it and wants to be around it and stuff, but it brings, like, misfortune to all those around it. It's so, like a mother of a family who like was completely great and stuff until she decided that uh, everyone was a danger to her family and just like flat out murdered two people and almost mur murdered the family until they were all like hey it's us the people you're trying to protect and she's like okay fine <laughs> but if anyone comes near you I'm killing them it's like all right let's just stay here for a while and, like, the end result was that it came from, like, a flower that had grown that the kid had, like, you know, taken and brought back home. At the end of the story, it's like, the kid has to, you know, dispose of this absolutely gorgeous flower. There's, like, a scene the kid's, like, carrying it over to, like, a lake. And it's, like, absolutely stunning flower. And then the kid, like, you know, turns their hand around, palm side up, and you see, like, five slugs on their hand all coming from the flower. <laughs> so that was kind of creepy. Again, no idea what that means. <laughs> Aren't dreams supposed to mean stuff? Uh, it means whatever you want it to mean. Like, if you're in, like, an out-of-control like, vehicle or something, that means that you're, like, moving too fast with your life and all that. Yeah. <laughs> it was Are a gorgeous flower, though. Are you moving too fast in your life? I have no idea. How about you, Ellie? Are you moving too fast? Why would you think that? Maybe I'm moving too fast. Don't get so ahead of yourself. Alright, I'm hungry. Should I have pasta, pizza, or rice? Uh, pasta. I have some seafood lasagna here. I'm on a seafood diet. Oh. I see food, and I eat it. Oh, yeah, that thing you sent looks pretty good. The, uh, was it the taco cat? Yeah, that looks, uh, that looks delicious. I would love to take a bite at, to bite into a taco cat. No response from cinnamon. Wow. Simon, I mean, you are where you are, cat, right? Meow. No, Cinnamon doesn't care. <laughs> Magic event going on in two weeks. Still no idea if I'm actually going to go there or not. <laughs> oh? Because it's taking place in Edmonton. And so the idea is that I would go with the family to the property, because that's, you know, between here and Edmonton on like Friday and then on Saturday get up early take the vehicle drive down to Edmonton you know take part in the event and then drive it back in like the afternoon slash evening except the family doesn't want me driving their big tough truck <laughs> around downtown Edmonton <laughs> mm. So, might be the case where mom will drive myself and, of course, my brother, because he kind of wants to go as well, to one of, like, the LRT stations, and we'll just use the LRT to get there. Ah. Or, like, a public bus or whatever. Instead of driving around downtown Edmonton. So I really have to triple-check uh, 
which place this event is at, because I don't think it's at the same place that the previous event was at. I think this is the place where Animathon was. Well, let me... Uh, do you know what it's called? Uh, face to face is hosting it. Face to face oh, games just... is hosting it. Oh, great. I just realized this is not the anime to look for. Uh, face to face. Ah. March 23rd. March 23, 2, yeah, uh, Edmonton Convention Center. Let me just verify this. Yes, it's where Anime Thon was. Mm -hmm. Which, I'm not sure if that's close to the LRT, but I don't think it is. I mean, it absolutely is. Oh, it is close to the LRT? I mean, the closest LRT stop is, like, two blocks away. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. yeah we can totally take the LRT. Yeah, let me just, uh... Let's just see here. Connections from... Do you know what LRT station you'd likely be dropped off at? Not a clue, nope. Would it be on the north end of the city? I have no idea. Is the north end where the Costco is? There's multiple Costcos. Cool. Might be north end. I won't know until, like, the day of. What if I okay. place that has, like, the least traffic in Edmonton, I'd imagine? Well, of the places with transit centers, that's probably the one. Clairview. Hi. Uh, especially since you're coming from the north. So, yeah, basically you'd be getting off at Central Station. Alright, cool, cool. Easy enough, easy enough. Grab the LRT, get on going down. Everything is fine. Do 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 do. Anyone have any last uh, points of conversation they want to get into? Pasta. Pasta Putinesca? Like from a series of unfortunate events, the novel series that was then briefly turned into a movie that nobody really liked, and then was eventually turned into a TV show that was like kind of good. I still say Series of Unfortunate Events, the book series. I read that as like a kid, a teen, and an adult. And it had like different meanings to me all three times, which I think was kind of a glorious work of writing. Because if you just read it as an adult, like the first time you read it is as an adult, you think that the message of the book is adults are useless, but that isn't the message of the book. The actual uh, message of the book, and well, the series in general, is adults often fail to listen to children, even if children actually do have knowledge about what's going on in their lives. Which is a thing that happens way too much <laughs> in the real world.
And also, uh, if anyone out there wants to read through a series of unfortunate events, I highly recommend re reading through the entire way. Uh, down to the very last word.